Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? In the last episode, we finally left Rio Dulce, Guatemala after a seven month refit of our hurricane damaged catamaran. We then had a nice easy three hour sail to Punta Gorda where we cleared into Belize. The process was quick and easy, but very expensive. It ended up costing me around $250, which included getting the dogs cleared in, so we hoped a week in this place was going to be worth it. Our next sail was going to be a challenging 80 miles up to Glover's Reef, into the wind and swell. First is scrubbing the day, the waves are going, and now they're cooking. We just know how to operate, that's all. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> if we're capturing this, can we capture the bit where we all have food poisoning later? <laughs> We've done a big overnight passage, and our first spot that we're going to hit is called Glover's Reef. And it's uh, there's a guidebook called Freya Rauscher, and she wrote down all of the um, information you need to cruise around Belize and Mexico on the Caribbean side. We're coming up to midday now, so you want to have really good light coming in. And um, yeah, we'll give it a crack now. The entrance to Glover's Reef was littered with bombies, so we were glad to do it in good light. Paradise. Pretty amazing feeling to be out of Guatemala. We don't have to be always What do you mainly catch around here? Snappers, hogfish, groupers. Do you spare them? Yeah. Everything is spare. Nice, so you're gonna sell that to a hotel now or that just now breakfast for you guys? This is gonna be for breakfast. Yeah, nice. Fresh fish. Yep. Can't beat it, huh? Can't beat that. <laughs> While in Glover's Reef, I met a local captain who informed me that the current price to enter the blue hole with our own boat was $40 per person per day, so $320 for all of us. So we had a quick crew meeting to see how everyone felt about this. We can come up, he said, even just coming up through here is beautiful. There's a white sandy beach all the way. And then we're in the blue hole. All the tourists will be there for the morning, but then they all leave. And then we can basically do what we want. We can dive in it, snorkel in it. What do you think? So okay. Okay. So Yeah. It's kind of a no-brainer in my opinion. It'd be a shame not to do it. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. So despite all of us being on a pretty tight budget, it was a unanimous decision not to miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So we set sail to spend the night at Half Moon Key, which is at the entrance of Lighthouse Reef, where the Great Blue Hole is located.
We sailed into the sunset with surprisingly calm seas overnight. And as the sun rose the next morning, we were greeted by our favourite warm-blooded sea creatures. Fish of the trip. Yeah. The Paracuta. They uh, they got cigatera over the other side of the Caribbean, but over here they're alright. First try on making it bread in the slow cooker. I made it garlic olive bread. What do you say, Freddy? It's pretty sketchy here, no? I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> hey, Jamie, put the bins on! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you got two foot out of your chair! Barbecue. I guess excited. Cannot wait for this fish. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Have you ever tried a bar barracuda? I a barracuda, actually, yeah. I can't like it. Oh, that looks so delicious. Yum. Yum. Wow. Yum. Oh, the head. We got some rice, we got some Canada, salad, yeah, and then we got some bread. <laughs> bread. Slow cooked. That looks incredible. Marty, do you want to just say sorry? We'll all forgive you. Just say sorry, <laughs> and we'll all forgive you. So today we're down here at Half Moon Key. And Kadeh for the night. It's a beautiful spot. Lots of nice birds, beautiful beaches. They let us use their barbecue last night and hang out on the beach. So we're going to leave here this morning. Go all the way up this track here, which is seven miles long, and end up at the Blue Hole. So we're lucky enough to have hung out with the uh, fisheries guys last night, and uh, they've offered to show us the route into uh, the Blue Hole. So they're just coming over now, and we're going to just follow them, because it's really shallow. Um, Bommies everywhere, so it'll be nice to just have them uh, laying out the path for us. We're in five feet of water here. We draw uh, 4.3, so it's pretty shallow stuff. You can see the bombies everywhere so I'm pretty happy to have uh, have a guide up ahead of us. Moorings they hold a hundred foot boat so should be strong enough for us. We're literally right on the edge of the drop off here. You look overboard and it's just dark dark black water and then just 20 meters that way, it's coral reefs. This is a pretty phenomenal place. We are uh, privileged to be able to come here.
here. We're getting ready for a dive in the blue hole. Close. A bit nervous. <laughs> We've just seen about a, what, 10 feet, 12 feet shark. Apparently there's hammerheads and everything in here. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> why, is your, why is your bottom lip quivering? Because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> And last night we met the rangers and they told us that there's actually a dead body, a fellow. Two. Two. Two and dead bodies and a GoPro they found. And uh, one of them actually still has their dive tank on. This one? So and they left them down there. Yeah, 50 years old. Uh, me and Helena are going to go be the guinea pigs. See what this dive's like. We're trying to find this ledge that we can dive down and go under. We don't really know where it is. The diving in the blue hole was like nothing we had ever seen before. The huge vertical walls of the hole dive deep into the abyss. It's such a spooky feeling to stare down into the hole, and your mind starts wondering what kind of creatures live at the bottom of the 125 meter deep hole. The overhang had huge stalactites which had formed centuries ago when the hole was actually above sea level. What it lacks in sea life, it makes up for in sheer size and magnitude, a truly unique and special experience. How was it? I don't know, you can't no. explain it. You don't know if you're like you shitting down. yourself or it's awesome. Or... And as you come to off that ledge and you look down, you're like... <laughs> Should we go or should we turn around? Sunset at the blue hole. Yeah, just take, just take we got such an incredible sleep in the blue hole that we felt motivated to start the next day with a nice workout to get the blood flowing. Hey McFly, you're working hard. One of the many luxuries of being on a catamaran is the amount of space we have to do such things. I find it hard imagining living on a monohull after two years on Parlay. Then our friend Steve and his soon-to-be mother-in-law, who we met in Rio Dulce, Guatemala, happened to spot us on the horizon, so tied up alongside Parley. <laughs> this place is insane. We've just been practicing a bit of free diving. We uh, haven't really been taking it seriously in the past, but we want to step it up a notch this season. Um, we just, this is our first sort of attempt and I got down to 84 feet, which isn't a bad starting point. Our friends uh, just tied up alongside us, so we'll probably just have some breakfast and hang out for a while and then uh, head over to um, Long Key, which is down that way. The blue hole had lived up to all expectations and then some, so we were excited to keep exploring Belize and the second largest reef in the world. Are we following you or are you following us? <laughs> Unreal, this is what it's all about. Oh my god. I think we're about to have a collision here. We've only got a foot and a half under you. 